Hey there drone fans, Rick here again from Drone Valley. In today's clip I want to take a few minutes out of a beautiful afternoon of flying to try to explain a question I must have gotten 35 times from you guys in the last 24 hours. And it has to do with connecting your Spark remote control up to your display device using a direct cable. A lot of people saw clips on the internet talking about this hack that's out there that allows you to get better reception and I got a lot of questions around does it work, is it dangerous, is it a good thing to do? So I thought I'd spend a few minutes talking about the engineering behind it and why it's okay to do that if you choose to do it and maybe in some cases why it's a really good thing to do. So for starters, when you normally use your Spark, you're going to power up the quad, you'll power up the remote, and you power up your display device. This will broadcast a Wi-Fi SSID. It's typically Spark-RC. You'll turn on Wi-Fi in this device. You'll tether it over Wi-Fi to that particular SSID. The minute you do that, you've now got these two bonded together, if you will, and they act as one unit. And that works normally for most devices out there. What I have found though is I use a lot of Apple devices and I've never had a problem. I don't know why that is, but both the iPads work for me, the iPhones work for me. The Android side of the house, I tried probably 12 or 13 different devices and all but four of them gave me issues. So four of them worked pretty flawlessly, but the others, the other eight or nine that I tested, I found that when I flew that quad really far out or if I flew it in a noisy area, I would get breakup in the video or I'd get delays in the video feed coming back. So there were definitely some issues and I think it comes from the fact that the Wi-Fi connection between these two devices can add a little bit of delay and by adding a wire instead, you're actually cutting back on that delay. So I guess if you're running an Android device and you've had any kind of issues with choppy video, especially when you fly that quad far away from you, you might want to try this particular fix. Now, it's not that an amazing thing because people are saying, oh, this is a beautiful hack out there, you got to figure it out. Honestly, it's not that big a deal because when you're connecting up your goggles to your controller, it's exactly the same thing you're doing. You're going to tether over a wire to your goggles the same as you tether over a wire to your, uh, your iPad or whatever you happen to be using for your phone. So the way you would do that is you take your remote, you need an adapter, it's called a dongle, that actually converts the micro USB connection on the bottom of this remote to a female USB connection on the other end. So once this thing's plugged in, you've now got a female USB connection. In my case, I'm using an, an Apple product, so I've got to have the right cable for it. I connect up the USB here, then I connect the other end of it to the Apple device. Now, I can turn Wi-Fi off on this. I don't need it anymore because I'm making my tethering connection through the wire. So this seems a little bit sloppy, but as you guys know, the iPad fits in there really nice and everything's good to go. Now that's that's a bit ugly, right, to have it long like that and to have this thing sticking out from the side. So I've got special cables I can use that we have available on the website that are shorter. So these cables are custom made to actually fix this problem for you. So you can take the original cable out, put that aside, and use one of these shorter cables. It actually allows you to make the connection and plug it in on the side and really cut down on the length of that cable. And it also makes it really nice on the side to hold on to it. So I've got those for Apple and I've got them for Android as well. But that's how you make the physical connection. And that's no different than if you're going to tether to the headset. So if you've got a set of goggles and you want to connect it up, the same exercise happens here. <clears throat> the only difference is you're going to use the Android cable. You're going to come out of here with a USB connection, just like you did for tethering that device and you're going to connect it up to the side over here this micro USB connection on the headset. Once you make that connection these two are now together as a pair. This becomes your display device. So it's basically a slave to whatever you're doing on your controller. That's the exact same behavior if you're using a phone or a tablet and use that wire to connect it. So I guess the advantages are if you're trying to run an Android device and you're noticing that you've got uh, choppy video or maybe slow video coming back from your quad or it's breaking up and catching up especially when you're flying at distance or in a noisy environment this might be a fix you'd want to use to take care of that problem for you. The downside of doing it though is that I talked before about how the remote control has about a two hour lifespan on a fully charged battery so when I go out in the afternoons and I want to fly for longer than two hours with the remote I'll take a battery bank with me I'll slip it in my pocket and I'll make a physical connection from that to this micro USB connection on the bottom and I can actually charge the remote while I'm flying so I can extend that two hours to maybe five or six hours if I choose to do that the minute I make this physical connection I can no longer charge the remote so it is a bit of a trade-off there the other thing that's really nice though is that because I'm not using Wi-Fi to make the connection uh, I'm not using as much power out of my tablet or my phone because when you turn on Wi-Fi, that's drinking a lot of the juice that's in the battery. So it actually cuts down the amount of time that you can use your phone or your tablet. So using this wire allows you to turn off Wi-Fi, get a little longer use out of your display device, and, and give you a stronger connection so you can actually get that video and eliminate that choppiness. So that's pretty much in a nutshell. So in essence, if you're running an Apple product, you're probably okay without worrying about using the cable, but you can if you choose to do that. If you're running an Android device, especially if you're seeing choppy video at distance, 
constants or in noisy environments, this fix probably takes care of the problem for you in a lot of different ways. So it's perfectly fine to do it. There's no danger. You're not going to cause any issues. And again, like I said, this is the way you would connect up the goggles. It's just instead of the goggles being a display device, it's going to be your phone or your tablet. And it works great. So hopefully that clears up any questions that are out there. If I've missed something or you have other questions that I didn't get a chance to answer in this clip, drop them below and I'll get back to you. I'm going to get back to flying, but I want to thank you again for watching the channel. You guys have been a real inspiration to me. seems like we're getting a lot of hits. People are happy with the clip. So as I always say, if you're happy, I'll keep making them. So hope you're getting a lot of airtime, having a great afternoon, and as always, happy flying. Thank you.